goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. But what we can do is come up with a collective list of what makes an MC great. Um, been having some deals in the comment section with some people um, over our Nas review of the King's Disease 2. Go check that video out if you haven't or if you're new. Um, but in having those conversations and having the Royce 5 9 conversation and having all these conversations and having the Locks first dip set conversation, we've been talking a lot about MC and, and the great rappers and these things. So I feel like to have these conversations going forward as a collective group, as a pod, as a pod squad group, we got to come up with some like criteria that we're going to judge it by that we can universally agree <clears> on. <throat> so that way, when we're talking about it, we're all on the same page as opposed to it being completely subjective. Like it's still going to be somewhat subjective, but I feel like we got to have some objectivity to it. So uh, what makes an MC great? Like when you're judging an MC, when you're saying, okay, this is the top MC, not my favorite, but this is the top MC, what criteria are you currently judging it on? And I'm posing that to both of y'all. I was going to put out that, like, I want to put out that there's a difference between MC and a rapper. A rapper, it's all performance-based, but uh, or whatever. But like, I chose my words carefully. Mm-hmm. But as far, so <clears throat> when I say these things, these are strictly on MC. What I feel like is a good rapper is totally different. It has more loose rules or whatever. And that's not what we're talking about. But <clears throat> um, first of all, memory. Your memory is like, if you're just as far as your performance goes, your, your memory... Uh, your performance, uh, just your overall music itself as far as like how the music sounds that you're putting your lyrics to and the message, mostly, or whatever. And, uh, I, I, and then how battle-tested you are. After all that, I think the battle-tested part is like the, the what a lot of people put, I'll say, will put, it's like the thing that puts them above the rest, pretty much. Okay, can you list those things one more time for us? Okay. So, um, I'll say, memory, performance, um, your, I guess you would call it musicality, or mu your, um, your taste and production, and the message, and then battle test. Okay, Faith. I'll agree with Pat on the memory shit. Yeah, that's a big part. You got to remember your shit. You can't be a bit stumbling and bumbling. Maybe you want to be a great or the top MC. Um, let's say command of the stage. Um, top MC, you got to command not only your performance, but you're controlling everything as far as the aspects, the background, the, the production, the crowd, everything. You in command because we're talking about the top MC. We're just not talking about once again my favorite. Um, so you mean like your beat selection, how you determine who's going to DJ your stage show, all of that stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you you okay. you on top of it because I feel that those who aren't or those who aren't involved as much as they could be on that, they're not on top of their game as they could be so that keeps them from excelling to that next level. Um example, let's see, um well I mean obviously JC, but right. 
I mean, duh. But the command he has, you feel me? Like, that is the essence of what a top MC would have, the, the total command. Um, let's see. Um, I go with the message, but more of, let's see, the, how can, I'm trying to put in the words. I was going to mm-hmm. add to originality and creativity along with that too. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a part of it. <clears throat> Did you have more faith? Yeah, not the message, but well, not only the message, but what the crowd leaves taken away from it. You feel me? Because you want to be profound enough in your emceeing okay. for whoever comes. You feel me? Like there you go. The impact of that you have on your audience. You feel me? You want them to leave with something. You want them to feel like that was a experience. You don't want it just to be like in every day, whatever. You feel me? Like you want it to be. You want them to leave like I'm glad I paid my money. That was what that, that was an experience I can remember. Like it, it should be a uh, if you're the top. It should be an experience worth worth waiting for. You you feel like mm-hmm. your crowd should be in there waiting for you. Like I've been waiting for hours for this motherfucker. Like this this is this is the person right here. If you got people straggling in, you got to have to have the seats empty and people straggling in two hours later, and, and you performing already. Like nah, you ain't the top. Um, I'm going for the um, revenue, your sales. Um, to be the top, you gotta have, to me, the the revenue that backs it up. Because what revenue, your your money, your, okay. your, your cash flow. Okay, your, your, ability, like, your, your, your ability to generate. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Exactly. Your ability to bring the people in, because you can. It's it's plenty of people out there that are MCs that can command the crowd, but they don't have the crowd to command. Hmm. You gotta be able to have that draw, that ability to draw me. You feel me? Like just, just on just on your name, they want to come see what you do. You feel me? Like, hmm. and then once they see what you do, they want to tell other people to come see what you do because of how well you're doing. Not just, oh, this person here. I just want to go see this person, and you go see the person, and damn, that won't worth my my time and my money. That's really you want to you want to draw me in, give that impression. Let them leave with that impression so they can tell somebody else about it too. That's like part right. street credibility back in the day, as far as when you were when they first started and MCs back in the day, you had to like have some type of street credibility to be even considered an MC to rap on the block or whatever. So like Yeah, because the nigga whooped your ass day. back in the day, you battling. Yeah. So fast forward back fast forward to today, that's kind of like what, what Face is talking about. Like, that's the that's the now version of that back in the day. Like, you you got to have enough names for people to even want to come and see you in the first place. Big facts. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to agree with y'all on several factors so we can kind of solidify our criteria. Um, I think, <clears throat> for me, definitely marketability. So I'm going to incorporate in that the tangible aspects of marketability. So like, what are your record sales like? What are your singles like? What are your show revenues like? What is your merchandising like? When you do a brand deal, how well does that brand take off because of your name being attached to it? Um, so marketability. I'm also gonna look at definitely and probably the top thing I'm looking at is lyricism. Um, I start there and then I work my way out from there, if that makes <clears> sense. Um, so lyricism. Um, how well do you use metaphors, similes, idioms, um, colloquialisms, um, entendres? Like how well do you put those together to paint a narrative or to say what you're trying to say in a way that 
I wouldn't have thought to say it or I would have thought to say it, but not have actually put it out. Like those things that make you go, damn, what the fuck? How did, how did you think of that? It's right. Yeah. My favorite ones are the ones that's right there, but nobody's ever thought to say it like that. Like it's right uh -huh. there, but nobody's ever thought of it. It's just there. Uh -huh. And you were the one to find it. Um, but just those type of things. Um, so lyricism. So we got marketability and lyricism. Um, yes, creativity is incorporated in that, all of that. Um, mm -hmm. I would say another part that creativity is lumped into would be your ability to control a crowd. Like we're talking about an MC. How can you move the crowd? How can you be the master of ceremonies? How can you, your presence... Whatever it is that you do, whether it be high energy performance, whether it be you standing in one spot for an hour and a half, how could whatever you're doing is captivating it to the crowd? How can you make them eat out the palm of your hands? So when I go to your stage shows, how well is the audience engaged in what's going on? How well are they knowing your songs and singing along with you? How well are they um, like vibing to the beat? Um, Two different examples on very ends of the spectrum. Uh, one of them we already talked about, Jay-Z. Very calm in his demeanor on stage. But his uh -huh. aura, his um, his confidence, his je ne sais quoi, you feel me, carries him to where at the end, like during the show, people are literally going through every emotion of every song that he drops, even when he is calm. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you got Busta Rhymes, super animated, over the top, wild and crowd serving, jumping in, like acting a complete donkey. And that's what captivates the crowd. And both have equal crowd control. You feel me? So I think it's just that. And both battle that, each other. That too. In high school. But <laughs> I think um, it's that thing. That uh, ability to keep the crowd eating out the palm of your hands, that moving the crowd aspect. So I would say marketability, lyricism, and your ability to, your crowd control would be the three things that I look at. And it seems to be, in different words, kind of the three things that y'all have said. Like, I've just kind of lumped some of the criteria y'all had into one category, but it seems to be those three main buckets. So like when we're that. looking at that, oh, go ahead. I was like, the one thing I like is like um, the combination of lyricism and performance where, where, all right, you have a metaphor and you know, there's always a basic way of rapping. You know what I'm saying? Just the way, same simple line for line rapping. But if you can flip that metaphor, flip that verse in a way that the technique that you do it is different, you know what I'm saying? The cadence that you're doing is different. It's not just like, Yo, I'm Pat One and I'm from the block or something like that. It's like, um, yo, I'm Pat One and I'm from the block and I blow the block. You, you know, something like that. Like just I'm just off the top. out a little bit. Yeah. Like like when you change the performance to it, like your technique and everything to it. That's like it like there's some it's some metaphors that I feel like if somebody else performed them, it would hit harder. Or whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm, <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How well you pick the metaphor to match you. Even. Mm -hmm. Like if I say a fire <laughs> metaphor, but it doesn't match what you know about me, feel about me, my general presence, my general way of being. <clears throat> the metaphor may be amazing. So you can respect the writing behind it, but it's not going to hit with that same oomph. As a person who it matches too perfectly, which is why, which leads me to my next question. I knew this was coming. Can an MC be great if they have had a ghostwriter? It depends on the extent of how much the ghostwriter wrote. Like if it's like if it's a, like a hook or chorus line, or something like that, or whatever, I'm fine with that, whatever. But if you're going bar for bar reading exactly what this person said, 
or whatever. I can't put you in the MC category. I can put you in the great rapper category because ra great rapper is more performance and image and marketing or whatever. But as far as like MC, because like <clears throat> rapper is more entertainment. MC is like you feel what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Like you feel what he's saying. It's believable or whatever, like, even if it's the most outrageous thing because they exaggerated because they're using creative metaphors to describe a bar or something like that, um, you still feel, like, the intensity of, like, how they say it, pretty much, but, like, all right, I'm kind of traveling off that, but, like, I, as soon as you, I hear you have a ghostwriter, in my head, that, brings you down you know what i'm saying like on your own individual lyrics or whatever if you you do have lyrics that you wrote yourself or whatever like i would say at that point you're a great mc or whatever but like if you got like a critically acclaimed song and you're the main person up there and i find out that somebody written like three-fourths of the song you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. or whatever you're just mm -hmm. supplying the ad-libs and, you know, the performance to it or whatever, I can't put you in the MC lane, but I can put you in a great rapper lane. Okay. <clears throat> Face, what do you think? Can our MC be great if they've had a ghostwriter? No. Okay. Okay. It's a straight I up flat note. <laughs> I feel like they that, like, defeats the Um... He, yeah, yeah. I look at MCs nowadays, and as as they say, the culture progresses. I look at battle rappers more as MCs, and the the more conscious rappers as MCs, and the more popular rapper rappers as rappers. Um, uh, I don't really see too many. <laughs> Let's see how can I say it. I I don't see too many popular rappers, i.e. Drake, that do not use ghost writers. Um, I I don't know if it's to save time to to put out a uh, uh, more quantity or whatever their reasons may be, um, lack of skill or whatever it may be, um, availability, lack of skill. Um, just, just because whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but I think that takes away from their skill level, um, regardless of how you can say the words or how you can retort them back. Um, you still have to have that ability to produce. And when a body of work is not yours, the way you retort it is not going to be, it's, it's going to be a certain way. Um, that's like if I write a poem, I'm gonna say it how it should be how it should be said because I know the feeling and emotion it was put in. You feel me? So I can invoke that when I'm saying it. With somebody else saying it, just reading the words and putting their own cadence behind it. So it's something different when your words are putting and you putting your into it and then you retorting that out. So once again, that impact comes back in in a play when you giving your words to the crowd because mm -hmm. you're giving that much more of yourself into your words when you giving that in you know I wrote this I was going through this and I know I felt like this and I know the people feel like this too let me let them give let me give me this to them and you see the people vibing off that you feel me that that makes you vibe back but when you read somebody else's words and you just wrapping it off your job now. it's like mm -hmm. i'm just i'm I'm reading a paragraph i'm i'm, I'm remembering a paper i read and right. I'm, I'm i'm just reading it back and feeling like that i'm just doing public speaking now right, right. public speaking to the beat if you know that i mean that's just part once again everything i say is a personal belief because i mean hey i can only speak on myself and speak from for myself but i feel like people who do have ghost writers and perform that that body of work that it takes away from your MC ability. See, I'm gonna say this. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Pat. Before I go, ahead. I would say like I think it's a general consensus, and I think if if you want to put on the um, 
the title of MC, you should want your words and your words only, only to be coming out of your mouth to like, I feel like that's the whole purpose of being an MC is like your words are the words that are being exonerated at this time. Like, or whatever, if, if, if you have a song and somebody gross wrote the song and then out of all the stuff that you wrote or whatever, that's the main biggest song that you have. You're not going to feel too much of like a MC internally inside. Like, like I, I just think that's like, that's like straight up definition of MC. I want my words to be heard pretty much as far as, Rappers go, rappers, that's a whole different thing. I just want y'all to see me and look, look cool as I rap, pretty much. That's, that's real. it. That's real. I want to sell my words as opposed to I want you to feel them. I'm selling the image more than I, I'm selling my words. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when it comes to ghostwriting, um, I'm going to say it like this for me, at least. In general, no. I don't think you can be great if you have one. However, say you got a dude, he got maybe some reference tracks from a ghostwriter, right? Now, 80 to 90% of the songs that you love from this dude, they are, they are his. Like, he wrote those. Mm-hmm. But you got 20%. Let's say a dude like uh, Sky Zoo wrote, a known mm -hmm. ghostwriter, right? Mm -hmm. Sky Zoo wrote all of these other 20%. Do we discredit that 80% that this dude wrote that we love, that we think is fire because of this 20%? Or is it, or like, how do we treat that? We don't discredit the 80% or whatever, but that that 20% hinders the 80%'s light. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. you know, oh, um, like you could totally ignore that 20% on the low and just look at his 80% or that hers 80% 80 and, and be like, right here, you are a great lyricist. You're being a great MC or whatever. But as far as if you're talking about being one of the greats, that takes you off the greats list because there's so many other greats that don't have that 20% or whatever. Got it. So what you're saying is when we're looking at the greats, we can judge them by the other three main criteria. But when it comes to ghostwriting, that's an automatic disqualifier because there's so many greats, as mm -hmm. we call them, or people like, it's almost like you can be a great basketball player, but that don't necessarily mean you're a Hall of Famer, but you're still great. You're just not one of the greatest of the greats. Mm -hmm. See, you so can never be a greatest of the great because there's so many of those that do not have ghostwriting on their bill. Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay. So I'm riding with you a lot. Of, I'm there's a lot of great rappers with ghostwriters. There's a lot of ghostwriters that are great MCs. Okay. okay. Because, like, for the simple fact that if you're that great of an MC, you got stuff to spare. You got the stuff that, like, all right, like you said earlier or whatever, um, this is a great bar, but I think this would sound better if somebody actually lived that life, did that bar or whatever. Like, okay. I, mean, I have a lot of drug bars because they're easy to do. I'm right. not doing them because I don't want to represent that. I don't think I'm the one that should represent that. Pretty much. It. I got so, what you're saying. That's real. Like, like there's a lot like a of pressure rapper who got mad gun bars, bars, but they don't live their life, so they just got them. But mm -hmm. I got you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm, I'm following. And I, I think with certain things, like I, I feel like, I feel like, cause rap is aggressive. I have my like loopholes when it comes to like gun bars and aggressive stuff because sometimes you just saying stuff aggressive as a man you know what I'm saying you're not trying to say hey I'm the most gangster person in the world I'm not you know I'm not king shit I'm not this boss I'm just saying hey as a man don't this disrespect this is what I do me. no I do yeah. that because no, you know as a father I will murk your shit right now 
Yeah, like that don't mean is, I'm just doing. I'm out here killing people every day life, but yeah. I will kill you. I will. I don't I want understand, to, but to protect my family, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. like a lot of, a lot of, um, how to say, a lot of rap is. Early on, rap was more like a guy's music or whatever because it had that aggression, and you didn't have music before that had that aggression that you could clearly relate to as a black person. Like there's like heavy metal and stuff like that, but they're not talking about anything that we're normally relating to pretty much with heavy metal as far as aggression, pretty much. But like I'm I'm saying all that to say. You know what I'm saying? There's, you know, there's loopholes and stuff like that to the rule, but those loopholes or whatever, there's always another person that didn't have to worry about that loophole. They just did it. You know, they just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they, they mm-hmm. checked that box. They didn't have mm-hmm. to leave. Checking box. boxes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That checking boxes story has been coming around a lot lately. It's a, it's a, it's a catchy phrase, man. You know yes, what I mean? It's a catchy phrase, man. A girl on Instagram can take that phrase or whatever and run with it. All she got to do is just walk and say, I check all the boxes and then go from there. Don't steal my ideas. Don't steal my ideas. <laughs> I was about to say, man, you better get your sister on that. Let's go ahead and get this partner's money. Keep it all in the family. Yeah, I had, Hey, go um, walk and say that. Make, 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 make this gif and this meme for us real quick. I was about to say, go get, go get sis. Hey, sis, do me, do me a favor. Let's go walk and say this line real quick. <laughs> oh, you about to make us a good, good lick. Oh, the ideas I've gave to people for their photo shoots or whatever. <sighs> hey, man, keep them ideas in the house, man. Y'all heard it here first, so don't steal our shit. I only say that from if you do it before Pat does it, we know it was you, and we're coming after you. Either way, they're gonna take it for point. everything you got because we ain't got shit. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man. Um, so going forward, what we've established is let's stamp the learning. Going forward, when we have these conversations about great MC and being a great MC, you got to have marketability, your ability to sell records on a high level, your ability to sell shows on a high level. The ability to affect brands, okay? Um, you got to have lyricism. Your ability to put words together in a creative way that, that other people are not doing. And then, obviously, the last one, how can you move the crowd? Are you an MC or are you just a rapper? Are you just standing there saying words that sound good together or are you actually able to, with your presence, with your performance, with your general whatever, are you able to get a crowd engaged into what you're doing? So we got our criteria. Let it now and forever be set that that is the Podge criteria. Hey, Pod Squad, what's your criteria? How do you judge a great MC? And can an MC be great if they've ever had a ghostwriter? Let us know down in the comments. No.